what if there is a large catastrophe and there's complete darkness so you can't call 911 and there are no phone networks and you're stuck in rubble or in debris in your house and an emergency manager gets this information live through our predictive technology and is able to come and rescue you. I am from a place called Kashmir in northern India that has a history of being seismically active and uh, we had this big earthquake um, in 2005. So I was 17 when the earthquake happened and uh, it was pretty bad. In many places in my um, hometown were actually significantly damaged and uh, they had a lot of buildings collapsed and many people actually lost their lives. So that, that was the initial drive which, which caused me to take up engineering. I went into structural and earthquake engineering and, and then um, I actually went uh, to work for um, basically the government of India building their thermal power plants across the, across the whole country. After completing two years there, my love for earthquake engineering had not gone. So um, one fine day, I actually Googled who's like the best stru structural engineer in the world. And one of the people which comes up in the very first page is this guy named Gregory Deerline. And I'm very interested in what he does. He makes these innovative um, earthquake resilience um, structures. Uh, I basically wrote a long email explaining everything I've done to him. Uh, and then I was like, can I come to do a master's? And the beauty was that he replied in 10 minutes. And that's how I came to Stanford. I, I went to, uh, back to Kashmir in 2014, actually to get engaged. But yeah, I reached back to California. So I'm an earthquake engineer and many of my friends here said, hey, you know what? A few weeks back, there was an earthquake in Napa and it was a six magnitude earthquake, no real big deal. But I was like, oh, I'm an earthquake engineer. I should Google about it. I, I learned that there were thousands of 911 calls right after the earthquake. I don't know exactly what. Um, is anyone injured? I'm just wondering about that earthquake we just had. Yes, is anyone injured, sir? If not, I have to let you go. We have many 911 calls. We're gonna be there to get you, okay? But we're gonna we're gonna go help the people that got hurt first, okay? I'm the only one here on property. I'm a security officer. Uh, we're experiencing a fire alarm. Okay. Um, we're not going to be responding because we have to deal with injuries and damage first. Call me back and if you know the damage. Okay. Um, the, what the emergency departments had learned was, well, majority of the 911 calls do not even come from Napa because Napa didn't have phone network. So I was like, wait a second. These people are actually using their most critical resources to to not go to the people who require help the most, maybe. I had used artificial intelligence in my past research projects, and I thought, well, there is a machine learning class with CS229, which is getting offered, and I should basically take a combined project in earthquake engineering and CS229, and let's see, can we actually learn on how these buildings have behaved in the past? and um, try to train models in order to basically make these predictions available live at scale and most reliably give them to the emergency operations centers. CS229 has this poster presentation. So everybody stands there in long queues in the Ariaga Alumni Center and um, many people walk by. And the professor, Andrew Ng, who teaches, who teaches machine learning, he walks by and uh, he looked at this and he's like, what is this map? So I was like, well, this is the damage map um, for building damage for the Loma Prieta earthquake. And building inspectors went house by house and tagged green tag, red tag, yellow tag on these buildings. And it took them a year. And he's like, well, what is this map? I was like, well, this is the same map, but we predicted this in three minutes. So I was taking both these classes, the earthquake engineering class and the machine learning class, and this was a combined project. Uh, so Nicole was my partner in the computer science class, and Tim Frank, a PhD in earthquake engineering, was my partner in the earthquake engineering class. And we were all working on the same project. Tim, after listening to Andrew Ng, he's like, oh, I know who can use this. There are these emergency operation centers 
who have these large screens and they are at city, county and state level. They manage the movement of police, paramedics, fire, every resource, or every rescue work or everything. And then we went to the first emergency operation center uh, in San Francisco. And those guys didn't believe us. Those guys were like, this is magic. <laughs>